Bitcoin and crypto just had a massive fire sale as prices of Bitcoin got down to 53,000. Ethereum tanked to under $3,000. You could have picked up Solana at $120. Why have the markets crashed? Is the bull market over? These are all questions you might be wondering, which we're going to answer in this video. Also, some altcoins that are at a deep discount that we believe can make you a lot of money over the next few weeks including Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, and two more that I have identified that I am looking to pick up the dip on, which we'll share with you later in this video, and why the markets are about to turn. One key indicator, which I'll reveal towards the end as well, as we see yesterday, the massacre of July 4th happened in the crypto markets. As we saw, over five, $580 million get liquidated from the cryptocurrency markets over the last 24 hours. With 446 million of that, around 77%, being the long positions. We saw the price of Bitcoin again get to $53,000. We saw Ethereum under $2,800. Prices have rebounded a little bit, but is there more downside to come? Um, there's a few catalysts as mentioned, but we still could potentially have a little more pain ahead. Now, why were the crypto markets tanking? Why were they down? And why is the fear and greed index in a bull market at 29? Why are people fearful? Well, the, the first reason was the country of Germany. For some reason, a country uh, that has their own currency is, is selling the hardest commodity digital asset in the world. And that is, of course, Bitcoin. So you can see here from the BitcoinNews.com, German government still holds 40,000 Bitcoin after their recent sale on chain data shows. If you haven't been familiar or been sleeping on the rock with what's happening or haven't been checking your portfolio, the country of Germany, the government has been selling some of their Bitcoin holdings from forfeitures and seizures that they've had. So the government has continued to sell its seized Bitcoin. The most recent sale of up to $175 million occurring on July 4th when the TradFi markets were closed and everyone was pretty much on holiday, at least here in the United States, the country of Germany has been selling. Um, and we take a look here from lookonchain.com. Uh, so since June 19th, the German government, the U.S. government, and Mt. Gox have transferred around 17,700 Bitcoin worth around $1 billion to exchanges. In particular, the German government has transferred Bitcoin every single day since July 1st, they hold around 396,000 Bitcoin worth approximately $22.7 billion. German government, 41,000 Bitcoin. And the U.S. government, 213,000 Bitcoin. Now, we know the U.S. government isn't selling, at least not on chain yet. Could that happen? Potentially. But we can still see a little more selling from Germany. But not everyone in Germany is a fan of the selling. You see here from one of their... Uh, from one of the politicians here, so instead of holding Bitcoin as a strategic reserve currency, as is already being debated in the USA, our government is selling on a large scale. I informed, insert colleague names here, why this is not only sensible but counterproductive and invited them to our lecture event with Samson Mao uh, on Bitcoin strategies for nation states. So could they face some political pressure to stop selling some of their Bitcoin? Maybe, but worst case scenario, they get through the rest of their 40,000 Bitcoin. And then we look back a few months from now and say, wow, uh, that was a blip on the radar. I uh, would take a look here again from Look on Chain. In addition to the German government, U.S. government and Mt. Gox, the whales are also selling as well as two large whales have deposited half a billion dollars to Binance since June 27th, which also, according to Look on Chain, caused the Bitcoin price to fall. But... I want to point to one thing. We did see something similar as far as massive Bitcoin sell-offs and Bitcoin was able to hold steady over $60,000. And it is none other than Grayscale. Once the ETF went live, Grayscale sold off around 50% of their Bitcoin holdings. Now, their Bitcoin holdings were the largest wallet outside of Satoshi's with over 600,000 Bitcoin, meaning... 300,000 Bitcoin were sold off due to outflows from the ETF. This all happened in a matter of three to five weeks. And Bitcoin's price remained above $60,000, my friends. That is around $10 billion when if you value Bitcoin at around $60,000. So we survived that. We can definitely survive 
the uh, country of Germany selling. We also have another big factor, which has been people have been talking about this for years. Mt. Gox distributions. When Mt. Gox went under, the price of Bitcoin was roughly around five, six hundred dollars. And so the thesis here is once these people start getting their Bitcoin back, they're going to sell it. Well, it seems like they have been selling it because distributions finally started taking place here from Coindesk.com. Mt. Gox begins repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Uh, we're unsure of exactly how much of that Bitcoin has been sold. We do know a lot of the traders in the markets try to front run the potential sell off, which caused the initial dip down to six thousand dollars. And we're going to have the actual selling of Mt. Gox that could put more downward pressure on the price of Bitcoin. But again, this is all temporary. Then you hear the talks of, is the bull market over? Is the top in? Was $74,000 the cycle top? Which if it was true, my friends, if that happened, this would be uh, the most boring and underperforming, underwhelming bull market ever. We did post a uh, tweet on X here. So quick thoughts on the current markets. Do I think the top is in? No. Is it a possibility? Yes. But here's the good news. If the top really is in, we're going to see the shortest bear market in crypto's history. It is more likely that we see the markets bounce back after the Germany and Mt. Gox subsides. In the meantime, don't use high leverage and don't invest more, uh, more than what you're comfortable with. Uh, also, from our friend Forrest over at Sistine Research, a couple of catalysts that could potentially reverse this downtrend of Bitcoin and the altcoins, beginning with the FTX repayments. Now, unlike Mt. Gox, where people got back the Bitcoin that they lost or percentage of the Bitcoin they lost, the FTX creditors, the people that lost money on FTX, are going to get their money back in dollars. And chances are, who knows how much, but a majority of that money could potentially flow back in to the crypto altcoin markets, as posted here by Forrest, 22 billion supply overhead between U.S., Germany, and Mt. Gox. If 100% got liquidated, a lot of Mt. Gox Bitcoin likely will stay in the crypto market. And then 15 billion of FTX creditor money to be repaid by the end of the year. And he called it a stimmy, so a stimulus. So that could potentially be a catalyst to turn the markets around. And the other one here is something called the Fed net liquidity. So this from Max Anderson, uh, the size of the Fed's balance sheet does not matter. What matters is the portion of it that's available to circulate in the economy. And this from Ash Crypto, this chart here, the Fed net liquidity rate of change. We saw a big spike last week or earlier this week. And the last time we had a spike this large, was back in March of 2023. Well, what did the price of Bitcoin do in March of 2023? Let's take a look at around that same exact time frame. Bitcoin gained around 56.6%. Am I saying that this is definitely going to happen? Absolutely not. But history doesn't always repeat itself, but it sometimes does sure rhyme. We take a look at, hey, if Bitcoin were to get that 50% gains, what would the price of Bitcoin be? Now, I do want to note that in his tweet that I showed earlier, Max Anderson stated that around 95% correlation to how the S&P reacts, and we know that the S&P is kind of a proxy to what we can expect from Bitcoin, maybe not so in the last couple of weeks that we have seen it decouple a little bit, but at the end of the day, they are both considered risk on assets, both the S&P and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. But if we were to see something similar, uh, a 56% run-up from current prices of Bitcoin would put us well over $85,000, $90,000. I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen, but it could potentially happen, or at least it could be a catalyst to turn the markets around. Now, I mentioned Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, great pickups. Let's take a look at where the current prices are at the time of recording. Ethereum, under $3,000, with the ETF coming and massive inflows potentially flowing into Ethereum on top of what BlackRock is doing with their Biddle program, tokenizing assets. They're building a damn exchange in Texas to rival that of the New York Stock Exchange. And you better bet that blockchain is going to have some sort of, they're going to play some sort of role in it. And we know that Ethereum is their chosen layer one, is their chosen altcoin. Ethereum under $3,000 is an absolutely genius play Again, especially with the ETF around the corner. Solana, 
dropped down to $120, back up to $135. And there's a very good reason. People are using Solana. They're using it to launch meme coins. They're using it for NFTs. They're using it for stable coins. Solana currently at a $65 billion market cap value. I know that seems like a lot, but it's very undervalued. We saw Solana run up from $20 to $200 in the nascent, very beginning stages of the bull market. We definitely know it's going to run back up to that $220, $250, but we have our eyes set on goals a lot higher. We believe here that Solana can reach up to $1,000 per coin if everything continues to trend in the direction that is already trending. Then you look at another top project like Cardano, Voltaire era, Chang hard fork, a billion dollars of treasury unlocked. What kind of dApps are they going to onboard? What kind of builders are they going to bring into the ecosystem? We know what they're doing in Argentina. They were going on a marketing blitz. We know Charles is going down there to visit with the president and the economists down there. What kind of partnerships could we potentially see from Cardano and from Argentina at 35 cents? Cardano is an absolute steal. We saw it rally from five cents to over $3 in the last bull market with essentially no utility, no smart contracts. So how high can Cardano go? Can it 10X? Can it 15X? Potentially, yes. But 35 cents is extremely undervalued. Now, there's two other ones that I am very, very bullish on. The first one is Chainlink. When we talk about narratives, real-world asset tokenization, what is bringing the entire crypto and finance economy together in the new age of Web3, it is none other than Chainlink at $12.32. It is an absolute steal with staking already in place, with Sergey Nazarov, the founder, making massive partnerships and going to symposiums and speaking on stages with world leaders like from the WEF, from the IMF, from the DTCC, and from SWIFT. Chainlink is extremely undervalued at only a $7.5 billion market cap. Absolutely crazy. Oh, not to mention, they provide the most important service from our smart contracts, which is Oracles. And the last one that also fits into the RWA narrative that is also tied to Ethereum is none other than Ondo. On this dip, you could have picked up Ondo at $0.92. Cents. Now, this thing did have a big rally uh, up to around $1.41. So you could have bought it. Uh, watch it go back up to $1.41 and been sitting on a 60 70% gain. We still believe Ondo is extremely undervalued. Uh, it is part of the BlackRock program as far as tokenizing assets on chain. We know, uh, obviously, RWA is the big thing they're doing. It is listed on Coinbase. It's got the liquidity. Great things they're doing. So Ondo is a fifth token. You want to be careful in times like this not to use too much leverage. You want to make sure that you're keeping your eye on exactly what is happening in the markets because price is just price, but what is really happening, which projects are standing out, which projects are continuing to build. And we've identified five that we believe could make you a lot of money. If you enjoy this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.